today we're going to be talking about balancing equations and uh, we're going to first talk about the reason why we have to balance equation, what this means, and um, then we'll get into uh, some examples of how to balance equations. So um, first off, we do have a law that we have, to, we have to abide by and it's called the law of conservation of mass. Essentially what this means is um, we do not destroy atoms, we do not create atoms, we just take atoms and we rearrange them, we break bonds and we make new bonds and to make new compounds. And uh, We'll talk more about that here in a little bit, but um, the whole crux of the idea here is we must have equal number of atoms on both sides of a chemical reaction. And you should have watched the video on chemical reactions, and really the, the dividing line in a chemical reaction is that arrow in the middle. Um, think of it as like a teeter-totter. It's got to be balanced. It's got to be have equal number of atoms on both sides. And so we'll talk more about that in a few months as well. Now, um, we have a couple of rules for balancing, and they're very simple. When we balance, we use what we call coefficients. Um, coefficients are just numbers that we put in front of an atom or a, or a, or a molecule, um, and it's distributed through that atom or molecule to change the number of um, molecules or atoms you have. And we never are allowed to change formulas and make balancing really easy if we could just erase subscripts off, but we cannot do that. So we can only use coefficients and so let's get right to um, balancing a, a relatively simple equation, um, and we'll talk about why or what we're doing here. So essentially, here's, here's our simple equation. We're making water from hydrogen gas reacting with oxygen gas. Uh, just as a review, we know that these are our reactants, and they're separated by an arrow, and there are products over there. Um, now, what we were saying here is the separation, the dividing line, is this arrow here. That's going to separate the reactants from the products, but we have, you have to have equal numbers of, of um, atoms on, on that arrow. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start off on, on this, at the beginning over here, and on the hydrogen, what this tells us, that little two there, is, means we have two hydrogens on uh, the reactant side. And we'll look over there on the product side for the hydrogens. And right there, we can also see that we have two hydrogens on the product side as well. So we would say that at this time, the, the hydrogens are balanced. Okay, so now let's let's look at the oxygens and see if the oxygens are balanced. Um, you should be able to see right here that we have two oxygens, and um, but over here, um, there's there's only one oxygen. And so the oxygens currently are not balanced. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use a coefficient. I'm going to put a two in front of here, and that two is going to distribute to the hydrogen. It will also distribute to the oxygen. So now I can go back down here and I can say, well, I have two oxygens now. But we've changed the number of hydrogens on the product side. This two, like I said, distributes through. So it's two, the coefficient multiplied by the subscript two. So we now have four hydrogens on this side. So now hydrogens are out of balance. Um, so we have to go back over on the other side, and we're going to go ahead and put a two coefficient of 2 in front there, and that distributes through to that subscript, so we have 2 times 2, so now we have 4 hydrogens, and now we're balanced. We have 4 hydrogens on the reactant side, 4 hydrogens on the product side, 2 oxygens on the reactant side, and 2 oxygens on the product side. We are completely balanced now, and um, let's go on to exp our, our example number 2 now. Okay, so here is our example number 2. We have AGF plus CaCl2 yields AgCl plus CaF2. Um, when we see a reaction like this, I just like to start right at the beginning here and um, ignore the underline, the red underline there. That's just my computer thinking it's misspelled. So looking right at the AGs, I've got one Ag on, on the reactant side. I've got one Ag on the product side. We're balanced. I'm going to go on to my fluorine, actually the fluoride ion there. Um, We've got one there, but look over here. We've got two of them. So I'm going to come back to the reactant side, and I'm going to change this and put a two in front, because I want to have two fluorides on um, both sides. But that just changed my, my silvers, though. So now I have uh, two silvers there. So I'm going to put a two in front here. That gives me two silvers on that side. Um, I'm going to go to the calcium now. Looking at the calcium right there, I've got one calcium there, one calcium there. I've got two chlorines there. I've got one chlorine there, but I do have a two here to distribute through, so I have two chlorines. So now we're balanced um, on this. So we would say in this reaction that we have a coefficient of two 
for the AGF. Um, when there's nothing written here, this actually means a 1. You don't have to write it, or you can write it, but you need to know it does mean that there is one calcium chloride um, formula unit there, and there's also one right there. So just kind of cleaning that up. Okay, now let's take a look at our, our third example here, and I chose this example on purpose because um, I wanted you to notice that there, right here, we have um, a polyatomic, more than one atom bonded together. This is nitrite, this, and there's this, the same exact polyatomic on this side. Whenever I see a polyatomic, instead of counting the nitrogens and the oxygen separately, I like to count the, just the number of nitrites or whatever the polyatomic is. So I'm going to actually count the number of NO2s there versus the number of NO2s there um, in my balancing, and, and you can do that as well. It does work if you, if you try to count individual atoms. You don't have to, though. That, what I'm saying is it's a, it's a trick to make life easier on yourself. So I always start at the beginning, right at the left-hand side, and I'm going to look at the uh, zincs there. I have one zinc. I look at the zinc there. I have one zinc, so zincs are balanced. I'm going to go to the bromines now. Two BRs. We have two BRs there, two bromines. They're, they're both balanced. I'm going to go to the lead now. We have uh, one lead there and one lead there. This is looking like it might, might, be, too, might be balanced. And then I'm going to look at the NO2s now, the nitrites, and I have two. This two on the outside here actually distributes through, and it tells me that I have two NO2s. This two also distributes through. I have two NO2s. This reaction's balanced. Everything, this is, we, we like to say this is a one-to-one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio. Um, everybody is, is a one here, so uh, that was an easy one. Let's go down to the next one. Okay, this example number four is a special type of reaction called a combustion reaction. And combustion reaction means we're burning something. And, and we know it's a combustion reaction for, for, for a couple reasons. One, um, we have right here what is called a hydrocarbon. And a hydrocarbon obviously is something that has carbon and hydrogen. Sometimes it'll have oxygen in it as well. Combustion reactions always need um, oxygen, so we have O2. They always produce CO2, although sometimes they'll produce CO, but we'll talk about that later. And they also produce water. So if you see products of CO2 and water, um, and, and you're burning oxygen, and you got a hydrocarbon, there's a good chance this is a combustion reaction. And when you do have combustion reactions, um, I tend to balance them a certain way. And my trick is, if you see a combustion reaction, I always balance these guys what I call CHO. Carbon first, hydrogen second, oxygen's last. If you follow that rule, um, you, you can tend to get uh, some pretty good results. So once again, we're gonna, try with a, we're gonna start with the carbons first. So carbons on the reactant side, I have two carbons. And on the product side, I have one carbon. And so I'm going to go ahead and place a 2 in front of here. So now I have two carbons. OK. I'm going to go to the hydrogens next. Let me erase the carbons off. I'm going to go to the hydrogens next. So I have six um, hydrogens on the reactant side. And I only have two on the product side. So I'm going to go ahead and put a 3, because three, 3 times 2 is 6. So now I have six hydrogens. And I have six hydrogens on the reactant side. Okay, so. Following along with the Cho idea, carbon first, hydrogen second, oxygen last, let's total up all of our oxygens on the product side and then go back to the reactant side. So on the product side, I have three, a coefficient of three right here, which is going to distribute through to this oxygen. And there's one of them. So it's, it's going to be three times one equals. So there we have three oxygens on right there. But I can't forget that I also have oxygens right here. And so I have a coefficient of two and I have a num the subscript of 2 behind the CO2, so it's going to be 2 times 2 equals 4. So essentially, I have 4 plus 3 equals 7 oxygens on this side. Now, I come back over to my product side, and here's the trick on this. Um, I need to put a number right here that when multiplied by 2, so we'll say x times 2 is equal to 7, because we want to have 7 oxygens. And you might be thinking to yourself, Ooh, there's no number multiplied by 2 equals 7. And actually, there is a number. It's a decimal. We could put 3.5 here. Now, if I put 3.5 here, it breaks one of my rules. Um, 
in that being coefficients have to be whole numbers. So I'm not done yet. So what I'm going to do in this case, I go ahead and put it, but then I know I'm going to multiply this entire expression by 2. If I multiply this expression by 2, it will get rid of my 0.5. So I'm going to multiply this 1 on the C2H6 by 2. I'm going to put a 2 there. I'm going to multiply my 3.5 by 2. gives me a 7. My 2 by 2, which gives me a 4. And my 3, which is going to give me a 6. So that, those are my, that is my balanced equation now with a coefficient of 2, 7, 4, and 6. Now, that's a little trick that we can do when we're dealing with combustion reactions. Not only do we try to do that carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, we can also use a decimal for that oxygen sometimes. And it happens um, oftentimes when you have an even number of carbons in your hydrocarbon. Um, if, so if it doesn't come out, just double it. OK, let's go down to our last example for today. OK, so here is example number five, our last example for today. And I chose this one on purpose. And, and the reason why I chose this is, is if you can recognize something in this reaction, there's a trick to this reaction as well. Now, here's what I want, I'm, I'm hoping you, you can recognize. Right there, we have a hydroxide, which is an OH. And right here, we have a water, of course, H2O. Now, sometimes these become tricky to balance. So here's my, here's my suggestion. It's a little trick that I like to do. I'm going to take my water. And I'm going to rewrite it as H dash OH. Means exactly the same thing. Still has two hydrogens and one oxygen. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of balance this molecule separately. I'm going to take this first hydrogen right here, and I'm going to balance it off of this hydrogen right there. Fair enough. Then I'm going to take this second OH, and I'm going to balance it off the OH here. And sometimes that makes life easier for me. So. Let's try it out. So on the reactant side, we have right here, we have two hydrogens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and place a 2 here in front of um, my HOH. And then we'll come back to that and see what, see what comes of it. I'm going to go ahead and raise that off. Now, I do have in this, in this um, uh, molecule, I have an SO4 right there. I also have an SO4 right there. So here, I have one SO4. And here, I have this 3 on the outside, which it distributes through. So I have three SO4s right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back, and I'm going to place a 3 in front of H2SO4 so that I have equal number of SO4s on both sides. I'm going to go ahead and erase this up. Now, I've just changed something. Um, hopefully, you, you can recognize that I've just changed my hydrogens. So this is 3 times 2 equals 6 hydrogens here. And over here, remember, remember I only have 2 hydrogens. So I'm going to go ahead and change my coefficient. And it's OK. You can do that. Change my coefficient there. And uh, we want 6. And we have, um, we have 1. I'm going to go ahead and put a 6 there. Remember, we're, we're balancing this hydrogen off of this hydrogen. OK? All right. Now, I'm going to come back over to the other side, and let's look at that boron. There's boron right there. There's one of them. Boron right there. And there's two of them. So I'm going to go ahead and put a two right in front of there. OK? And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double check on my OHs, my hydroxides. And so I have two times three for six OHs here. And then over here, I have six times 1, because I have 1 OH right there, and so I have 6 OHs. Okay, So now we're balanced. So I'm just going to double check, make sure everything's balanced. Once again, we have 6 hydrogens. We have 6 hydrogens. We have 2, two borons, 2 borons, um, 3 SO4s, 3 SO4s. We're balanced. And so our coefficients would read 3, 2, 1, 6. That is. Um, that is the lecture for today on how to balance equations and with five examples.